Anthony Gianelli, following in his footsteps. To trust is to open oneself to the beauty of an encounter, recognizing our personal limits and making the necessary space so that someone can enter in. These are Gianelli's words of advice. The place is Italy. The region, Liguria. The province, La Spezia. The zone, La Val di Varra. The town, Carro. And its small village, Sereta, located in the Apennines Mountains. A date, Easter Sunday, April the 12th, 1789. In the church, the bells are tolling. And in the nearby house, a newborn baby is crying. At the baptismal font in the church of Sereta, Antony receives his name, both his name and the gift of faith. Antony Gionelli's parents, James and Mary, are farmers. They are peaceful and hard-working people with simple and solid Christian life and values which they pass on to their children. Anthony helps them in the fields and learns to share basic foods with the poor because as his father says, the poor also have a stomach. He attends the parochial school in Castello, about four kilometers from Sereta. He is an excellent student, aware of his parents' effort. Like the poor, he cooperates. He walks barefoot in order to preserve his shoes. He gathers wood for the family's fireplace. What is going on in Antoni Giannelli's heart? A vocation to the priesthood is born. He will always value formation and study. And from this human and spiritual wealth will flourish his apostolate and his self-giving. He enters the seminary of Genoa thanks to the generosity of Mrs. Nicoletta Rebisos. He is ordained a priest and at only 23 years of age, his dream to belong totally to Christ comes through. His first assignment is in the church of San Mateo as a vicar. He approaches everyone with humility and affection. His preaching is not according to the current style. He used to say, you have to preach the truth and not elegance and preach it with simplicity. He is assigned professor at the seminary of Genoa. Here his report with the seminarians inspires trust and closeness. Pay attention, this is Chiavari. Here in 1826, Fra Antoni is named Archpriest of the Church of St. John the Baptist. Following the Good Shepherd's example, he pays attention to the needs of his people in order to provide he follows the Spirit's lead and creative promptings. He gathers young women bound by the same desire to give themselves to God in a spirit of unlimited charity, ready to go wherever there is a need. Near the sanctuary of Our Lady of the Garden in Chiavari, on January the 12th, 1829, the Institute of the Daughters of Our Lady of the Garden is born. Mary will always be for her daughters a model and an incentive on their journey to holiness. Prayer nourishes the community for a life of service. A great woman joins the daughters of Our Lady of the Garden, a young widow, Katharina Podesta. She brings with her a great human wealth and a great capacity for love and self-giving. She is determined. Thanks to her foresight, the daughters of Mary are able to convince the founder to go out of Chiavari and to serve the sick in the hospital of La Spezia. Unexpectedly, 
Anthony Gianelli is made Bishop of Bobbio. October 1837. The new bishop finds the clergy very slack and lacking motivation. How should he encourage these priests? By his exemplary life and by the help of the Holy Spirit, he conducts pastoral visitations, synods, but above all, by much love. Following Gianelli's guide, Mother Catherine leads the small communities with courage, wisdom, and a great openness. May charity continue to teach us to be generous towards our brothers and sisters, especially the poor and the sick. This is Piacenza. Bishop Anthony Gianelli has consumed his life in his apostolic works. He is convalescing here and enters eternal life on June the 7th, 1846, materially poor, but spiritually rich, especially in charity. His body is at rest in the Cathedral of Bobbio. The founder's heritage to his daughters is a passion for God and for all humanity, who even today ask to be recognized and welcomed, to have a place to live, food and education. The church declares him a saint on October the 21st, 1951. St. Anthony Maria Gianelli's example and intercession mark the style of the life of the daughters of Our Lady of the Garden. Evangelical vigilant charity is the strength of their being and their mission. Dispersed in the four continents, in Europe, they are in Italy and Spain. Gianelli's words, you will cross the oceans, stir enthusiasm in the sisters. Mother Chiara Podesta from Genoa comes quickly to Chiavari at night and says, Sisters, there is no time to sleep. The Lord is calling us to America. They prepare for the trip in three days and leave. In South America, by making reality the founder's words, you will cross the oceans, the sisters come to Montevideo, Uruguay, in 1856 as pioneers. Then to Argentina, frontier women, they provide for any kind of need. En Pergamino, a very special seed sprouts, Sister Crescentia Perez. In Brazil, the sisters with the people promote humanizing relationships despite the distances. In Chile, they favor the Christian education of children and young people. In Paraguay, the sisters act like mothers to many people. Recently in Bolivia, the sisters are angels of charity for sick people. In North America, in the United States, the sisters build communion by accepting differences. In Asia, in Jesus' country, Bethlehem. In Ortas, the sanctuary of Ortus Conclusus, Christians and Muslims, all are worthy of listening, attention, education, being listened to, cared for and educated. In India, people are spiritually rich. Gianelli's daughters follow charity's demands in favoring the promotion of the whole person. They are led by Gianelli's words, poverty will be your leader and guide. In Africa, in the Democratic Republic of Congo, the sisters aim at doing good, always good, with a charity without boundaries and limits. 
They try to eliminate violence and injustice and to promote the dignity of all the individuals in this nation. With God's grace in their heart, the sisters open new horizons to life by promoting fraternal rapports and by paying more attention to the most poor. In the rich diversity of the Gianellian family, sisters, priests and lay people, driven by authentic charity, make an effort to promote justice, peace and respect. Guided by Jesus' words, you yourselves give them something to eat. They offer to their brethren the bread of love, hope, welcome and understanding. The dynamism of evangelical vigilant charity bears fruits today in many and different apostolates under Mary's maternal gaze and through St. Anthony Gianelli's blessing. <laughs>